So collectively, these tools that were brought by the Tuatha Dé Anu masters, they're called the gifts of destiny for a reason that is not quite apparent. Some believe that the spear became the cult icon of the Spear of Destiny, and the sword uh, became of Caliber and Excalibur. Um, you know, there's even some conjecture about the famous Gundestrup cauldron found in Denmark being the famous Black Cauldron of Lore. It's important for a modern neo-Druid or Druidologist or historian, you know, if nothing else, to accept that this is how the elemental correspondences sparked in its being. Elementalism becomes an increasingly significant aspect of the Druidic tradition as we progress uh, through the lessons. On a summer solstice some 5,000 years ago, the Tuath Dianu battle the Furbog with their prowess and might and magic and win. And then sometime later the Milesians arrive and the Tuathans decide to withdraw rather than go extinct. And this is this is another interesting reference to the uh, Tuath Dianu as the elves. Um, they did speak of an island west of Ireland in the Atlantic Ocean called Tiernanog, the land of the young. And, uh, you know, it seems bizarre to some, but the Tuathans who stayed behind seem to become the elemental fairy races, and with their m mystical power and magic, um, were considered almost interdimensional in existence and from their dissension of the uh, people of light, Anunnaki and whatnot. So after having erected such sites as Stonehenge and Avalon, now Glastonbury Tor and whatnot, the dragon priests gave way to the new druid form of the day. Um, and this transitions at a uh, time period, uh, Battle of the Trees. Uh, this is an obscure piece of Druidic history concerning itself with uh, almost anthropomorphic manifestations of animate trees. Very Tolkien-esque. Um, such, such an archetypal shadow memory, though, exists in the folds of our psyche. And from what we are told, the Battle of the Trees occurs circa 400 BC, which is... 200 years before the Greeks or anyone else ever makes classical reference to the Druids. The Tuath Dianu become parents of Hyperborean Druidism, as it were, although their names are referred to in Celtic mythology as gods and goddesses. But a further examination of the lore will reveal them to be highly self-actualized individuals arriving from another perhaps physical locale, though they were said to have possessed knowledge as if it had come from the stars. Um, most neo-druids don't make assumptions about extraterrestrial deities, um, but we do find that in the mythos of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Uh, it does not, however, seem to contradict that they did have incredible abilities, um, including apparently interdimensional mental technologies, and they became models for the later druids, and their stories of their tribulations and successes actually became the main subject of Celtic mythology and Celtic history as a whole.